Hey mushroom nerds, Anna McHugh here. I want to share with you um, a couple of specimens of the lobster mushroom. The scientific name for this is Hypomyces lactiflorum. And this is a really interesting species for a variety of reasons. It also highlights one of the things I just love about mushrooms. So when I'm out in the woods and I'm contemplating the meaning of it all, one of the things I just love about the fungi is that they just transform so radically, sometimes over a, such a short period of time. So they're here one day, they're gone tomorrow. You're looking at a bolete type mushroom and your book says, well, it could be red, blue, gray, or brown, depending on when you find it and what it's growing under. So, you know, their variability, their ability also to, again, transform from one thing to another thing really uh, captivates me and enchants me. Now, when we are talking about the lobster mushroom, it's not just uh, sort of the magical enchantment of the fungal world, it's also a delightful edible mushroom. So Hypomyces lactiflorum starts its life as a humble russula mushroom. So those are cap and stem mushrooms. They're very brittle, they're bland. So if you're interested in eating wild mushrooms, you typically can eat a russula, but you wouldn't necessarily be impressed by it. Uh, but it gets attacked by a uh, specific mold. Again, Hypomyces lactiflorum. Hypomyces is a large genus that um, has a lot of um, mushroom parasitizing species. But in the case of lactiflorum, it transforms this uh, russula mushroom into a really delightful edible. And, uh, you know, it has sort of a, a fishy flavor to it, sort of lobster texture. So it's really nice. Uh, from an identification perspective, it's also relatively easy. So we're going to cover that part. So what you have is uh, sort of a lumpy, bumpy, stippled uh, surface. You can see actually the gills of the mushroom that got parasitized. They're sort of, um, you know, warped. So, uh, you know, essentially you often, not always, see, uh, you know, a rippling of gill. This is a really good example that looks uh, a good bit like the mushroom that it used to be. Another distinguishing feature, of course, is uh, the color. So this orangey, you know, um, cooked lobster look is distinctive. Sometimes you'll find them and they're much more in uh, the pink range, especially uh, as the mushroom matures. But again, this orangey color is really, um, you know, best for, especially the mushrooms that are in good condition, because these can go a little bit too far and start to get mushy and really not all that delicious. So uh, when you break the mushroom open itself, you have uh, white flesh on the inside. It's a little bit brittle, a little mealy. Um, and then another feature you almost always see is this big divot in uh, the top of the mushroom. If you're familiar with uh, russulas, they will form this big like cup and they'll start to catch all kinds of, uh, you know, leaves and other debris. And lobster mushrooms inherit that specific feature. So when you're collecting them, it's really important to make sure that they're in good shape. So first things first, you want to give it a, uh, a smell. Now, if uh, it's very fishy, you want to leave it alone. But if you have a sort of mild seafoody aroma, that's sort of the sweet spot. Uh, one additional thing is um, lobster mushrooms, when they're in best shape, this uh, sort of surface on them is, um, it feels rough and a little stippled. It's sort of like uh, rubbing the top of a newt, if you've ever done that. Uh, which if you haven't, you absolutely should just do it very gently. Uh, but you know, it's it, again, it's sort of a rough um, uh, surface. But uh, you know, as they get past their prime, they start to get a little bit on the slimy side. So you want a rough surface, something that may smell either neutral or very faintly of seafood. Once you get into the area where you're like, wow, that, that's very fishy, um, you wanna leave it be. Uh, as far as finding these dudes, you're going to find them oftentimes in association with pine, but also occasionally with deciduous. Again, you have russula mushrooms, of which there are many that are being parasitized by Hypomyces lactiflorum. So you can kind of find them, uh, you know, anywhere you would find those mushrooms, which is everywhere. The one thing that is interesting to me is that even though it's a mold and it's growing on, um, you know, a very, very common um, mushroom, you tend to find lobsters in the same place year over year, which to me is kind of interesting because again, you have this sort of like contingent relationship between, um, you know, a mold growing on a mushroom. And uh, so it seems a little bit unusual to me that I can find lobsters in the same spot year by year. 
Uh, so yeah, they're delicious. They have a nice sort of seafood thing going on with them. You want to be a little bit cautious when you're cooking them because sometimes this brittleness can make them fall apart before you get them nice and cooked and they'll be a little more robust. Uh, so you want to be a little bit more on the like medium low heat as opposed to uh, medium high heat because then they might fall apart on you. But uh, again, I've gone on enough about transformation, about uh, contingent relationships between a uh, parasite fungus growing on another fungus, one of my favorite edible mushrooms that I find in the same place every year. I certainly hope you identify your own patches and catch them before they get too fishy.